Okay, so this is what the firewall looked like before we made the modifications. And this is where it's, we're at now. We had drilled out the hole that would have been for a four speed, but since this was an automatic, the hole was not created. So we used this step drill bit to penetrate through the fiberglass that was covering over the hole. Once that hole was drilled through, uh, centered, the hydraulic master cylinder bracket, we centered it in the hole and then used and clamped that down and used that as a template to create the mounting holes. And also made a mark on the top of the bracket to make sure that it was installed the same way when we went to reinstall it, because there were several times we had to take everything back out, install it again, take it back out, install it again, and take it back out. So we didn't want to take the chances that we might, you know, flip it around or flip it upside down. So making a mark on the top of here, making sure that it was installed um, the same direction every time. So the clutch pedal, it is installed for the 30th time or so. And here's what we going, got going on with the linkage. So we have a piece of 5 16 24 rod attached to the heim joint on the pedal. And then here is the, um, the clutch part there, the master cylinder. And you can see right there, we just need to make a cut and connect the two. And then we need to make a stopper also because it only can have, I believe, like a little over an inch of uh, maximum clutch pedal travel, or it will overextend the hydraulic release bearing. Um, so I'm gonna make a mark on that and cut it, and then connect it and see what happens. I have to drill two more holes and install this plate and then put some jam nuts by the coupler for the 5 16 rod that pushes on the master cylinder. Is this some kind of test? So we're doing a test run on installing the clutch pedal. We also have the hydraulic master cylinder installed on the back and trying to make sure that it all fits correctly. And in our last attempt, we are finding that it's having, we're having to make new modifications to make it work correctly. What are the problems that we're having? We're having lots of problems. This isn't working well. <laughs> so basically this master cylinder kit is very, very universal. And it's kind of a big pain to get to, uh, to work smoothly. Um, you know, you wanna take into account a lot of different things while you're putting it in. You can only have a maximum of 1.12 total clutch rod travel, or you're gonna overextend the release bearing and damage it. Um, you also need to be conscious of the clutch, um, the rod angle that goes down to the master cylinder. Um, we use the factory Corvette holes and it's just really, really, really tight. And if we use it, if we leave it how it is now, the set screws on the side of the master cylinder to where it attaches to the bracket are not gonna line up. So either gonna have to weld the bracket or slot that out like another eighth of an inch. The brake booster is clearing. So the, the problem, the biggest problem is that the, the clutch master cylinder needs to come up like a good half of an inch, but there's no room because the brake master cylinder's in the way. Um, we took the, the master cylinder bracket and there was like a, a half inch piece that stood up on one side. So we ground that down for a little bit more room and then we gently massaged the brake booster in right there too for a little bit more space. But still the rod is like just, I mean, it just absolutely clears. There's no, like I'd love to have a little bit less of an angle, but I don't think we're gonna be able to unless we change brake booster size, which I don't think is an option. Here is the hydraulic master cylinder on the firewall outside of the car. And you can see the corner 
that we trimmed off of the bracket here. Uh, this side we left alone because there's plenty of room. Um, the problem that we're dealing with now is securing it from moving it up and down. Um, the angle that it has to be at is pretty far down right here so that the clutch rod is um, straight to the pedal. But when it's down there, it, it doesn't, uh, you can't get the set screw in the side. It's really hard to show right there. So what I'm thinking about is grinding the powder coat off, putting a tack weld on it so that it won't move, and then reassembling the whole thing and bleeding it and making sure it works correctly. Then we'll put the brake booster back on. Hopefully, we're ready to install this for the last time. Um, I have the coupler on there and I have it threaded right about to the middle um, so that both rods are equally um, inserted in there so we don't have any problems there. I have a jam nut on there so it can't loosen up. Um, so we're gonna slide it in, put the bracket on the other side and tighten it up and then attach the clutch pedal and we're gonna bleed it. I guess it's time to connect the hydraulic line. And then the next thing we need is some dot four fluid. So this has to be above the below and below the upper. I mean, just gotta be above the master cylinder and the hydraulic release bearing. It says it takes 10 minutes and all you do is push the pedal down and lift it up for 10 minutes straight. So Kayla, how's it going up there? It's going pretty good. What's happening? Um, a lot of pushing of the clutch. Yeah? And how's it working? It's all the way down to the ground. It disengages so you can make your shifts. Yeah, about right there. It engages. Perfect. So we can see here. We can get this in there. There it is. There's a good shot. I'd call that the money shot. There she is doing her travels. <clears throat> All right, so that's a success. So Matt's tidying up and finishing some last items up here. We got the clutch pedal installed and the clutch hydraulic master cylinder is now finally installed for the last time. And then the brake booster spray painted and installed and the brake master cylinder is installed and everything is tightened and fits. And then we found a spot to mount the reservoir to finish up the job yet. We still have to install the drive shaft, the exhaust system, um, some nuts and bolts on some few last items. Yeah, the cross member needs to be tightened and I think we're gonna to need to get some new emergency brake cables too, because it's a stick shift, so we're gonna be using that a lot more. Probably don't wanna run the old ones. Yeah, and then we'll start gutting the old HVAC system um, from front to back. The Vintage Air has a new um, condenser, evaporator core, blower motor, wiring, everything. So um, all that has to come off, and that's what we're gonna tackle next. <laughs> 